finishes straight and finishes with a goal. Inside the centre square. Play on. Watch this. Kicks it to centre half forward. Play on. Still inside the centre square. Kicking the goal. Kicking the goal. Play Still on. inside the centre square. Watch this kick. Watch this kick. Play on. gives chase, but he gets it away to the running Heaver. Brent Heaver, 70 metres out, stabs into Kernahan. Oh, they're starting to look dangerous. Kernahan has booted three. Gee, that's a fair kick. Now he's booted four, and that's their score. Not really all that effective, Powell. Grab, and grab brilliantly. Ola Renshaw was the tackler. Denim and Izard. Izard into the centre, the kick a little too high. Just centimetres, but there's Long brilliantly to Harvey. Harvey goes straight towards goal. Silvani and Salmon, punched away by Silvani. Buick off the ground! It's a goal! Magnificent Buick! Williams, who reads the crumbs beautifully. Look at that hand pass. 30 metres to Craig Bradley. He pumps it long in towards Kernahan and Danaher. Powell is there also, tucked in the pocket. He bends it round, wow. and he's kicked an amazing goal. Who wants it? Who can pick it up? Long to Hills. He'll have to hoist it high. He does. Into the square they go. Silvani! Couldn't take the back. Saw it up the ground by McCurry. They've still got possession though, the Blues. On half forward. Spalding to Williams. Diesel Williams clear. 48 metres. Look at that kick. Oh. That's a magnificent kick. He saw Gleason. Well, he must have heard you. He shoots towards goal. towards Watson and Kingett. The latter trying to push it forward to the 50 metre line. He does so now. Watson gets clear. 30 metres out. Tim Watson. Eastman remain in the hunt. And does the shepherding. Bradley's got pace and dash. He goes over the middle. Out towards Kernan on the half volley. This could result in a goal to Angelo. Yes! Bob is still not done with. Harvey kicks it to the goal front. Marky contest here. Ridley couldn't take it. Watson kicks the goal. Jimmy Watson's kicked his third goal. Five G misses from the game. The final shoulder. I mean, there's many areas you think during the match that you possibly could have. Um, probably the four goals here, yeah, just late in the third quarter, cost us dearly. Um, but we'll learn by that experience and, and hopefully it'll you know, really be the, the best thing that's, that can happen for next week's game now to get a real tough hard hit out like that after um, like having a bye and bringing six players into the side. <clears throat> uh, but really, you know, we had an opportunity, a great opportunity at that stage really um, to, to really seal a, a win in, at that period of the game, about the 20, 25 minute mark in the third quarter. We played probably uh, the better football at, at, at most stages. I, I, I know that uh, halfway through the third quarter most people thought we'd lost the initiative and maybe lost the game, but we've had a uh, pretty good record in the last uh, you know, 12 or 18 months of being able to work hard to get back in, and I think from our point of view that was good. And our forward work I thought was um, probably better than theirs, and therefore we got a better result from the times we ended 50. McDermott there with one hand, comes to the back, Pittman to McDermott. Through to Liptak. Short pass up towards the 50. Smart, a good pickup. Gets past Jenky easily. Booms a long kick. A oh, terrific kick. Yes! Taken away by Jarman. Jarman to half forward. Over the back is Wiedemann. Oh. Well played by Wiedemann with strength. He's got backup support. A lovely hand pass comes out to Bickley. And Mark Bickley races in the goal and puts it through. The Jarmans are on each other now. Darren out of the middle. It goes past Hudson. A chance for Nixon. It sits up well. He took a step too many as bowled over. He regains his footing and kicks the goal. Back to the 50. Platten still after it, going at a million miles an hour. Hudson. Round on the right. 
This is close. Oh, what a goal. Lee does well for Adelaide. Jarman comes in quickly. Oh, Liptak, dangerous. Liptak goes long, as long as he can. McGuinness is there. It bounces for a goal. Tony McGuinness receives from Tregenza in towards half forward. Length of the big fist away. Still the Crows. Wigney. Now Nigel Smart. He's kicked it. Yes. Crows in front. Takes the ball. Gives it across Tregenza. Another player slips over. That was Darren Jarman. Simon Tregenza sprints clear. Brings it in towards Wigney who marks 60 metres from goal. Stuart Wigney's got an open goal. He's going to go for the long kick. It's a booming kick. Modred Langford. And Langford punches the throat. Could be a goal. Yes! Well, I think, you know, nothing went with us all day. You know, I suppose not making excuses, but, you know, we, the bounce of the ball, everything was, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, our true situation today. But, uh, you know, our third quarter was very, very good and we came right back into it in our last quarter, the start of it. Uh, we had probably most of the ball, you know, for the, for the first 10 minutes of it and they took it up. So, uh, but I know I give full credit to Adelaide and uh, congratulate them on their performance. Having surrendered the initiative in the third quarter and, and it looked like exactly the same at the start of the last quarter, I thought it showed um, you know, a great deal of, of effort from our guys to get back into it and, and go. We just needed a few things to go right for us and, and they did. McIntosh superbly goes in and fights for it. Stevens tries to knock it out. Cock has got it in front. Evans gets the hand pass away. This is Wilson. Schloss almost had him. Wilson gets free from 40 metres out. Great kick. Hines is the target. Watch Blakey over the top. Got a fist on it. Well played. Buckley waits in front. Boots it down towards half forward. Coming across the ground is Roberts. He's outnumbered. The boundary line could be his ally here. No, he keeps it in. Oh, very lax defence. Roberts oh. will kick a goal. <laughs> Opening minutes of this tour. Smith. Lewis, uncontested, takes the mark. Godden's coming on, McKenna's going off the West Coast. Shaping up as if it's a torpedo punt. Good looking kick, great goal. Godden couldn't control it, Scholl did well. German had it then lost it. This is Wilson right on the 50. 48 metres out, kick was smothered. Godden had it slapped away, Matera with the outside of the boot if you don't mind. been played in the main on the West Coast Eagles forward line this match. There's Kemp, feeds it off to Hart. Normally a sharp shooter directly in front. No trouble at all. It was disappointing for all concerned. Um, feel for the players. Um, you know, obviously you'd want, to, you'd want to do better than what we did today. Uh, it wasn't to be. Um, we, need, we needed a, a bit of luck. Unfortunately, just things were... Things were falling apart at the seams one by one, and uh, you know I suppose I suppose in retrospect we looked at, we, we looked very tired from the Brisbane game, and, and our players really probably gusted out just on desire and determination. And I suppose um, you know and I'm not disappointed from their input, trying wise, uh, endeavour wise. They, they, they never stopped persisting, they never stopped persevering, and I suppose at the end of the day um, we just weren't good enough. I was pretty happy with the way. Uh, players that, that didn't that didn't score necessarily weren't poor players for us. They were players that uh, set up other opportunities perhaps, kept the ball in there, put pressure on their backline players, which is the North Melbourne do run the ball very well, so I thought we stopped them um, you know creating opportunities for Carey and Roberts and, and so forth fairly so Ron Welsh when he was about to be tackled fended off with a uh, palm to the face. Inside the 50, oh. oh, uncontested. Bone should have taken the mark, but snaps for goal anyway. In the goal square, a big chance. Whitney gets the first goal. A bouncing ball. Williams has been pretty quiet. His left footer, oh, Madden is 30 metres in the clear. Wren giving chase, Ooh. what a sprint. This is something to watch. Madden goes long for goal. He might have kicked it. Whoa. Sensational. When he had to attack the ball there without any sort of confidence, Liptak back on for the Crows. Heaver. Oh, what? You're kidding. Oh, 
Oh, terrific hand pass to Liptak. Liptak's kick well inside the 50. Brown, same direction as the ball, and Modra approaches it. He's got the mark. Yes, paid the mark. Modra at the left hand end, 45 metres out. Has got it. He must do more when uh, Carlton has the ball coming out of defence. Spalding, the only chance for Carlton. It flips to the back to Williams. Williams floats a hand pass. Hogg had to wait for it. His tap out is clever. Bradley gathers. Now they're a chance to run it into the breeze. Bradley all the way to the 50, all the way to the 30. Craig Bradley goes for goal and kicks a ripper. Good tackle by Athorn got him down. Good hand pass from Bradley, releases McKay. Shocking effort from him. Comes down towards half forward. Rusciuto overran it. This is to Ulio. To Ulio to Bradley. History repeats itself. He runs to 30. He may have kicked another one. He's third. McDermott to Jarman. Great hand pass. Lip tack through the middle. His pass wide for Modra. This time Silvani nowhere in sight. Take him to 123 for the season. Looks all right. A goal. He can go like a stall gift runner. Ange Christou off the left boot. Kernahan the chance. Pushed Three. out. Must be a free to Kernahan. Advantage. It goes to Heaver. Open goal coming up for Heaver. And now Bradley who kicks number five. It'll be tough for the Crows now. Three of their best, although Hannah fumbles this time. Gives it away in effect. Tasker back to goal, but he can make something here. Turns, kicks, and for one of the few times hasn't seen his kick touched on the line. It's a goal. Off hands to Welsh. Now Williams charges to the 50. Gives off the hand pass. It's Heaver right in front. Another one. Plenty of the ball to win. It's just we couldn't convert important opportunities. And I think also importantly, uh, uh, restrict. Uh, a couple of the the easy goals that they were, you know, the, no, I guess no goal was easy, but they they scored a couple of goals very uh, very quickly and without a lot of pressure. So uh, if we'd have taken a couple of opportunities and, and restricted uh, a couple of their easier goals, the result could have been different. They were under a terrific duress for most of the day. Uh, they forced a lot of errors. Uh, certainly they had tons and tons of opportunities, Crows, and, and so our back line. It was, it was duress for the whole day, and so in a real sense I suppose we got out of the game because of uh, their good work. Um, we converted our reasonable amount of our opportunities. Uh, the number of times we went in we got a good result for the few times that we did go in. And our midfield, we got cleaned up on the wings very badly in the first half, but a couple of Haythorn and uh, Tommy Alban were able to close uh, Anderson and uh, Tregenza down a little in the second half, who'd been uh, absolutely dominant players. On the Renshaw, taps it through the forward, chance for Flood who fumbles, the late inclusion on the side, Kemp, good gift to Warsfold, on the McKenna at midfield, Denham in pursuit, not a good kick, down towards half forward, chance for Sumix, left foot snapshot, looks pretty good, draws it back, umpire says full points. He'd love to be out there, Rick Kelly is a tough cookie as Salmon gets it out to McCurry, McCurry onto the right foot, Mark McCurry brings it back, oh he's gold I think. Kemp is changed on the half forward flank with Chris Lewis who's coming up for a run on the ball. Salmon. Oh, taken by Watson off the pack. Timmy Watson sprints in the goal and the Essendon champs kicked it. Nice balk by the Eagles veteran. A little chip pass up to Lewis who's been fairly quiet likewise today. O'Donnell's done a good job on him. Back to Wilson who moved down the ground well. Pike can kick long and does so. Or kick it off loads him. Be a free kick downfield if he hasn't kicked it and he has. Repulsed there as Mercedes receives from Denham onto Ola Renshaw in towards half forward. Guy McKenna at the back puts enough pressure on. Another player slips over. Oh gee, this is Kelthorpe setting sail for home. David Kelthorpe and he's kicked the goal. Kick four goals. Salmon had a terrific start to the match. Kicked the first goal for Essendon in the first quarter. Did the same in the second. Long in front of Wilson goes long. What a terrific kick! Great goal. No mark. Oh, brilliantly done by Hills as he brings it back towards half forward. Kicker tries to get front position. Punched away from him. Oh, well played by McCurry. He props. Brings it in towards half forward. The players set themselves. Taken away by Buick. Oh, look at this kick and goal by Buick. Cut it. He's dumped it. Great goal the little rover. And he's happy because he's 
probably thinking he might be settling up again next week. But here's Waterman on the left foot from 40 metres. They need a goal. And Chris Waterman has kicked a great goal. Hills from midfield. As I said, the night a little bit better now at the MCG. Salmon has made the lead. Hines in front. And Djakovic. Three Essendon players are there. Buick robes it well. Snapshot. Oh, what a corner! Away he goes. Eagles players were looking around and he's off. Mercury can't take the mark, but plays on. He could kick a goal from there, 15 metres out, and he has done. What a beauty! Watson will go the punch, as Jared said, move down to the back pocket. Oh, Kemp steals it. Will he give it to Lewis? Yes, he will. Lewis takes it. Left foot snap. Looks pretty good. Goal umpire moves back, and the fans behind the goal like it. It's there. Well, look at this. There's bomber players everywhere. O'Donnell and Salmon. Salmon back to O'Donnell. O'Donnell further afield to flood. Now Long. Michael Long over the top. Here's a chance. Kelthorpe gets onto the right foot, shoots a goal. It's another one of the Bombers. He gets carted over. Pick up by Hedy. O'Donnell goes to punch. Lewis drives it well. A snap at goal. Looks pretty good. Goal umpire has it moved. It's there. It's been an inconsistent here. You know, we had no consistency. And for that matter, it's, it's not even on a week to week basis. We've, had a, we've, we've been inconsistent on a game by game. And I'm talking quarter by quarter, contest by contest, you, you know, you, you tend to you win, a, win a, a, uh, a contest with two players going for the football and the next time it comes back it seems to be the players take the wrong method or in behind or whatever the case may be. In fact, in, in the other side of the coin, he may reverse it and, and won, but, you know, we, we just haven't had that, that you, know, you talk about run-ons that can win oh. games of footy. At no stage did we have a run on during the course of the year that would get us into a, a firm position on the ladder. And I thought today, I mean, West Coast are probably the more powerful side, more strongly built, better equipped in a, a physical sense, and, and, and mentally sort of 80 and 90 and 100 game players probably more than what we did. Uh, so I think for them to come back and perform like that and um, hold off a, a spirited, tough, strong club like West Coast, we've got a pretty good opportunity here, and I think the players can see that. There's a new world arriving. Today, people travel between countries like they used to travel between cities. And one airline best understands their needs. Cathay Pacific. Every flight we make is international, with cabin attendants from 10 Asian lands serving a single purpose, to help the new world of international travelers arrive in better shape. There's a new world the first tap out of the centre. Denham's quick kick will probably get the job to tag McGuinness. Visca gets uh, a kick away for Adelaide half forward. Smart in the box seat. Went with one hand. Grimbold on him. Smart from 55 metres. Centering kick to the goal square. Not a bad one. Hodges sets himself. Chance for lip tack. First goal round the body. Looks good. Great start. McGuinness over the top, Grenville taps it out, Bickley, Jarman's got good hands normally, lip tack to Brown, left foot snap kick, a good one by Brown, a goal! A great goal! Gene Wooderman had him for a while, play on call, Bickley in the pocket, does he run out of play? Still in there, here's Brown's already kicked one, left foot snap, another great goal! He's kicked towards the half forward, Wunderman couldn't take the mark. Essendon fans appealing for the free kick. No, look at this man, Nigel Smart, handball over the top. Is it all right, Nigel? Unselfishly, Smart will get the goal. Brilliant football by Adelaide. It's all clear, it's a goal by Adelaide. Don't worry about that. Oliver Inshaw, handball wide for Long, backs himself. Centre wing, kicks it long, in towards the 50 metre line, it goes her back, lift tap, run on son, no he couldn't quite control the football, neither could Nigel Smart, chance for Mogra, kick it, he does, and he gets it out of the goal, has he, yes, the big man, Sean Wren, onto the right foot, he's kicked too high, Paul Hill drops what he should have taken, Brown, Nigel Smart, runs inside 50, I think he may have kicked the goal, he has. O'Donnell Sneddon goes short with a chip one. 
Oh, probably should have done better, Bickley. Buick will kick a goal. Go and does. Wren sets himself well played, Sam, and a couple of minutes in the first half remaining. Rusciuto took it off. Anderson got it from Wren. Anderson's probing kick to the goal square. Hurt getting back. Goal! It's a goal! The ball floating in the breeze. Punched away by Long from Jarman. Rebounds for Watson. Handball brilliantly. Denham, unselfish. Buick will get it now. Little touch by Pittman was important. McCurry close to the boundary line. McCurry does well. Handball Salmon. Get the goal. Backs himself. Forced to kick with the left. Inside 50 metres. Coming out and taking a nearly a great back. But the recovery was enormous. Fletcher and Wanganin combined. Ella Redshaw's got the footy. Running through the centre of the ground. Streaming away with a fourth bounce. Wanganin's turning lip tack inside out in this turn. Taken by Carthor. McCurry will go. Goes for it. Sits back. Gets it through. Handball gave it away in a hurry. McDermott against the flow court. Gets the handball away. Maynard gives it to Long. Long stages. Watson important. O'Donnell should go. Goes and puts it through. One wonders. Away goes Ola Winshaw to Wanganin. In short, Watson. Shorter again, Mercury. No, Watson gets around. Forced to kick with the left. It slews off the side of his boot. Set up back for Adelaide. Very important possession. Watson's got it. Watson goes for goal. A bit disappointed. I mean, the game was there to win. We were playing well enough to win it. But, uh, Essendon lifted their work rate. We didn't respond well enough. I mean, if you're going to be satisfied with finishing third, you don't ever deserve to finish first. So it's just far too easy to say, yeah, we did well, boys. We, you know, we came a lot further than people thought. But I mean, we always knew we were good enough to get to where we got. So the only people we surprised were people outside. I don't think we could ever sit back and say we're satisfied with that. You know, you don't often win your you know, finals, knockout, preliminaries, you know, seven goals down and uh, come back like that. So it's a credit to the boys. Um, they believed in themselves and they persisted at trying to get another goal or two when things were grim and uh, possibly at the greatest time in the game where you've got you know, grave doubts, um, you've got to believe in yourself. And it goes not only in life, but naturally in a 120 minute match, uh, footy match. with the experience but it's taken now by Mercury. He steadies, shoots the ball into centre half forward. There's a scrambling against Savani. Certainly the free kick. And Athorn having a bit of a dust up with Buick but the free kick is with Essendon and to be taken by Paul Salmon. Always the first goal is such a fantastic atmosphere as Salmon goes for goal. And he's kicked it. First goal of Essendon. Chris Du. Can't get the ball clear. Now the Blues a chance. McKay away for Heaver. Heaver's little kick. Gathered by Gleeson. But oh, Wanganin nearly took it with him. Brown kicked the full forward. Kernahan's got it. No mark. Play on. Elvin can't get past. Well scragged. Kernahan snaps off. Kernahan. Carlton's first goal. Fleeting hand pass by Mercedes comes out to Ola Renshaw. Hoping to start something once again. There's that oval ball. Thompson up towards the 50 metre line. Bombers are making a change. Jared Healy. Watson off for Wallace. So Wallace getting his chance. The veteran Watson off for the moment. There's a lovely hand pass to Denham. Denham shoots the goal and pops it through. And he says thank you. Wanganeen gives it away to Harvey. Harvey long and low to Hurd. Thirty-four goals in his career, this young man. He's now at 35. Oh, threads his way through the pack. Gives it to O'Donnell. The Bombers are looking like a champion team at the moment. Buick may get a chance. He's 40 metres out from goal. Hurd is there. Shrugs one tackle. Gets a long, low kick in towards full forward. Carlton has the numbers, but that's all. Oh, Wallace has kicked the goal. Could nearly be penalised. Umpire watching. Now play goes on. Chris Danaher gets clear and kicks it into the pocket. 
not a bad pass, and a good mark taken by Mercury. Mercury for goal from 40 metres. Good kick. It's another goal of the Bombers. They're eighth. Taken by Powell. He handballs to his own advantage. Over the top. Well stumbles. Go at it hard. Oh. He does. He stood up. Could try to get the hand pass to Powell. Brown is caught. In goes Somerville. And the Carlton players appealing for the free kick. And on this occasion, umpire Goldspeak says... Well, it's been a fantastic performance so far. We've gone under 10 minutes. Welsh goes for goal. It may just sneak through. It is a goal. Gets the hand pass away. Wanganin has been very steady. Fletcher, from a standing start, goes up towards the half-back line. Salmon takes the mark. Away they go again. Hill, will have to be quick. He is with a high kick up towards Somerville territory. Sandwiched between two Carlton players. Bjelic, look at this. Ha-ha! <laughs> The bombers are hot! Brown looks for Williams and gets him. Good tackle by Salmon. Ball spills now for Heaver. Handball ordinary. Puts big Justin Madden under pressure. Heaver's got a chance. He finds some space. He gets past. He's running near the centre of the ground. And he goes into the pocket. Looks for Welsh. Wallace up high. Kicked by Kernahan. It's going to go through. It's bounced through. Up towards uh, the centre of the ground, Sexton was the fly, Gleeson may try and thread his way through, he does so, well done Adrian Gleeson off to Silvani, forced to use the left foot in search of Kernahan and finds him. Kernahan another vital kick inside the last minute of the first half, a long drop punt, this is going to be very close, he's kicked it! Oh, what a great kick. In the meantime, play goes on, along towards Salmon, the big man in trouble. He does get it away. Buick belts it wide to O'Donnell. O'Donnell's got a bit of space, plus he's got Ricky Olerenshaw. Clever chip by the youngster. Paul Salmon. Kick two in the first quarter. He's kicking from 49 metres. Well, his kicking has been superb. It spills free to O'Donnell. The left footer can chip to the 50 metre line, and he does. Blues have been chasing bums since then. Here's Mercury from 52 metres. Gets underneath a drop punt. It looks good. It is. Kernahan front spot. Bradley and Athorn both there. Bradley does a 360 and kicks high to full forward. And it's going to be a free kick. Well done by Welsh. If you're in front, Jared, you've got some chance. Wallace was played a similar one up the other end when he got Welsh from 30 metres. He's made it tough for himself, but he's just stuck it in. Excellent play there by Essendon again. Long just backs away. Have a look at oh. this. Take me on, take me on, take me on, he says. And still gets away with it. And pumps it to within 50 metres. Here, well inside. Away goes Chris Danaher. Have a look at it. Brilliant football, Danaher. And out wide is Scholl. Can carry the ball. And runs past his opponent there, which was Thompson. Into centre half forward, Kernahan's mark. Kernahan goes for goal. Long kick right to the line. It might have gone through. It has. They pounce upon him as the ball spills free towards Bradley. Desperately, he tries to get through. He does to the running Alban. Alban off to Kernahan. Kernahan, don't tell me he's going to kick another one. Here's their sole man up forward. Through comes Scholl. He can't control it. Yes, he can. He gets it to Alvin. The Blues surge forward. Kernahan's got it again. Absolutely magnificent single-handed performance by Kernahan. Just biting at Essman's ankles. Kernahan goes for goal. It's holding up. He's got it there. It's another goal. Yes, he can. Bradley now. Alvin, 46 metres. Tommy goes for goal. The Blues with the last two goals. Madden's dominated the centre. Away goes Calthorpe. They don't want this. This will sting. Calthorpe's shot for goal. It's on the line. It's through. Calthorpe replies for the Bombers. Captain to captain. Madden, but straight to Long. Oh, clever hand pass to Calthorpe. We'll go back to Long. He's running with him. Now he's clear. 80 metres out. 70 and closing. Up towards full forward. And the mark taken at the back. Salmon will have a shot. Salmon, 
This for number four. 40 metres out. He's kicked well all day. That's no exception. Who is just putting a stamp on this game, Gary O'Donnell. Quite brilliant around the centre of the ground. And another brilliant kick to the goal front. Spalding couldn't take the mark. Another goal to Westland kicked by Hurd. It's all over. Sheer excitement. Off to Mercury. Long again. Is this man the best man on the ground? I ask you. To half forward, wing it in. And now he wants to cap it off with a goal. And he has. He has. Kevin Sheedy has done it again for the Bombers. There's the bounce. Somerville and there's the siren. Victory for the Bombers. Michael Long. Number 32, he's a marvel, Timmy Watson. And the captain, Mark Thompson. And now Polly will present the Premiership Cup, Foster's AFL Premiership 1993. Nearly to the end of the career and the snip one now, it's just unbelievable. How's it compared with your first? Oh, it's much better, I reckon. <laughs> much better. Undescribable. And what else? <laughs> the reason why you're paid for the big one. Woo! Oh, it's unbelievable. Undescribable. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just heaven. No, it's a great feeling. Sort of, I think it probably hit me harder probably during the week with sort of so much hype around it now. So. Uh, oh, it's a great feeling. Did you really make Michael Long the player he is today? Yeah, I tell you, did you see every time I got it, I looked for it? That's right. It's not hard to see either out there in the sun. <laughs> well done, mate. Thanks, Ryan. Congratulations. We are kind of in our own ability. We weren't overconfident, but um, the pressure was wild. It was unbelievable in the first quarter, but I think once you settle in, um, you get used to the pressure. It doesn't get easy. You just get used to the pressure. Oh, it's the grand final. There's always pressure, but uh, now we got off to a good start. Yeah. We got playing a bit of catch-up footy after that, and we were able to hang on. It's, it's like a dream. It, you, you can imagine someone who's retired walks away the game for 12 months. This time last year I was in here interviewing West Coast Eagles players and I mean I've just got to keep pinching myself to make sure that it's real. Well it's going to be a good side coming up. I don't think they're anywhere near their best footing yet. Uh, they've definitely improved. They're very good listeners. Uh, and they get out and they try to apply what the coaches have asked for. They're quite disciplined. And uh, they've got a bit of a blend of everything which you need. When you lose a grand final, I mean you take solace later on that you we took a big step this year, Carlton Footy Club, to get there and we play some good footy throughout the year and blood of some good young players who are going to be, you know, 100, 200 game players for us. I mean, you take solace from that, but I think on the day when we had a lot of blokes down, it, you know, it's pretty hard to get anything out of it, out of today at the moment. So, you know, we'll have to regroup in the next month or so, and rebuild and hope we can do it better next year. Everyone keeps talking about the baby bombers and I mean, they, they've got a lot of young guys and We've got a lot of young guys too, you know, maybe not as young as their players, but certainly there's a lot of future there, I think. What a magnificent night, mate.
Not a bad game, was it? Hi, I'm Paul Salmon and this is... James Head. Looking fairly ordinary, James. Uh, we're both members of the Premiers for 1993, aren't we, James? That's right, Paul. Feels all right? Sensational. Yeah, it Sensational. looks all right too. And uh, I don't know what's better, the uh, game itself or the aftermath celebrations? Well, uh, they're both pretty good, Paul, but I think uh, your performance on the dance floor at the Hilton last night <laughs> <laughs> sure made for a good performance at the Hilton. The aftermath celebrations were fantastic. I thought I moved all right too. I thought you were sensational. Showed a few new moves? Second behind me. I thought you were disgraceful. <laughs> Anyway, there's plenty more action to come in the show, and why, not, why don't we get into it, eh? Of course, we've got the top marks, goals, tackles and bumps of the month. Plus, we'll see the great man god, Gary Abbott, at the Coleman Medals in action later on, James. That's right, Fish, and we've got our top football writer, Mike Sheen, looking back at the sensational year, and we might meet the Brownlow medalist, Gavin Wanganine, later on. You win any of these highlights? Um, hopefully, I might have kick, kick a few goals, kick a few points, I think, I think yeah, a few this year. Yeah, you're a bit hungry. And of course, we've got the uh, Brisbane Bears player, Norwich Rising Star of the Year, Nathan Buckley. Another medal winner of the uh, Norm Smith medal, our teammate Michael Long, mate. He, he, he turned it on, didn't he, in the sure final? Great game. Well, Fish, what do you reckon we get on with the show before uh, we run out of steam? Yeah, it's a good idea, James, and we certainly should. And uh, what better place to start than with the marks of the month? Jarman was in the clear in that kick. Very, very inaccurate. Olorential, move it quickly. Kicks it in towards half forward. And that's a mark of good one. And he will take it. Off he goes, as Long remonstrates with the umpire. Kernahan's his man. Oh, Harvey! The Skittles were standing on the marker now. This is his man they pass the ball to. Good kick. Excellent kick. And a magnificent mark. Oliver and Shore off with that uh, problem with his left hand. Simon's back on. Todd Ridley. Long kick towards Salmon. Silvani. Sensational. Visca in the grass. Rusciuto and as far as Brown. Carlton keep their composure. Kernahan should have got it free. He's taken the mark in any case. Overuse off the interchange. He does tend to use their interchange plays as 19th and 20th men. That's still from behind for the mark. Somerville dropped what perhaps he should have taken. Williams may make him pay. Oh, what a mark by Wingerdy. The mark taken by Masidi. CD on centre wing. Kick in towards kick a foot back. No flow at the back was Ben Hart. Oh, brilliant mark, Robo. Schenko tries to backhand it. The alarm bell sounding for North really forward in this term. Stevens towards centre half forward. What a spectacular mark by Waterman. Well, competitive. It's kicked to about 30 metres. Oh, right! Yeah! Hi, I'm Darren Buick and you're watching Football Record Video. Buick rounds it beautifully, Pike in pursuit, he's kicked one goal from a long way out. Will that be two? A magnificent goal! There are a lot of colourful claims being made by light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? All right, Fish, so earlier in the year, the player question concerned um, who was the most talented player in the AFL? Yeah, it was, and there's no surprise that that man, again, Gary Ablett, the John Coleman medalist, was the man voted above most most of the year. He's had a sensational year, Joe. And what a battle it was with uh, three players kick kicking the ton. I mean, uh, and you didn't even get close. Well, that was a bit hard, isn't it? What? You can't say that. Well, you might have got close if you'd played enough games. What was that phantom injury you were pulling all year? Phantom injury? Oh, I've, I've gone down, the team's gone backwards. <laughs> and you come back when we win a premiership? That's right. You, all credit to you? No, not at all. That'd be right. Not at all. Ablett will be his man. Ablett and Brennan. 
They're at each other. Ablett. Oh, he's crunched into that goal post and he's hurt. Certainly will put it within scoring distance for the Cats. In towards centre half forward. High oh. fly. He's in front. He's picked it up now. Slung as he gets his kick, but it won't worry the champion. Inside the last three quarters of a minute, Ablett, the target, uses his body. Oh, he takes a one-hander. Hills or Hurd, Ablett. Snap, <laughs> number 10. What a great game. Oh, very talented player. And off the left foot. Oh! G'day, I'm Steve Cannon, and I hope you're enjoying watching Footy Record video. Dorotic, long kick towards half four. Oh, Kernahan's pulled down a screamer. It's been a great year for the Essendon Football Club, James, not just because he won the flag, of course, but the season was so even, wasn't it? Sure was, and uh, I think we've decided to uh, ask Mike Sheen, one of our top football writers, to cast his eye back over the season 1993 and give his point of view. Well, you should know, he's one of the best. Well, Geelong clearly was the best team to miss the finals this year, there's no doubt about that. In fact, there's a school of thought that says they were probably as good as any team in the competition. But the reality is that they started poorly, they ended up winning only 12 of their 20 games, and you can't give starts like that. I think the, uh, the pluses were uh, a fantastic year from Gary Ablett with 124 goals, uh, and we saw in the latter stages of how important Barry Stone is to that team, and with the development of a few of their youngsters, and certainly they are entitled to hope for a better draw next year. They had the toughest draw of all teams in the competition. I think the future looks bright for the Cats, but as we know so well, who knows what Geelong's going to do. Well, clearly one of the big disappointments of the year. The Magpies started in a blaze of glory and won six out of their first seven and sort of appeared at that time to carry Victoria's hopes of uh, perhaps breaking West Coast supremacy. They finished with only another five wins from 13 games and none of those teams finished in the upper, in the top half of the ladder. So there was obviously something amiss at Collingwood. Clearly the message was that they were too old and too slow and we can expect a big clean out, I think, at Victoria Park over the summer. Um, Perhaps on the plus side, Severio Rocker's form was good and uh, they'll be looking for big things from Jason McCartney and perhaps a return to the best of Tony Francis and Scott Russell. Well, the season started on an ominous note with the, uh, the famous parachute jump and things appeared to go downhill from there. But there were factors that uh, caused Footscray's decline. I mean, there were the injuries to Steve Wallace and Steve McPherson, the failure of uh, Danny Del Rey and Chris Grant to play up their expectations. But the Bulldogs salvaged something out of the year with uh, wins over West Coast and North Melbourne in the last two games to finish with 11 out of 20. They had a pretty tough draw uh, and they were one of four teams from 1992 to miss the finals this year. But I think we saw enough in the latter stages of the season to suggest that they can hold their ground and perhaps we'll have a better year next year. Well, the Demons actually never recovered from the huge start that they gave, losing their first four games. And it was always going to be difficult to make up ground from there. And when they did finally have some real hope of contesting the finals, they went to Sydney and became the only team to lose to the Swans this year. Now, obviously, the form of Djakovic and the fact that he couldn't get on the ground for more than half the games was a huge factor. He kicked only 39 goals for the year when they were probably entitled to expect that he could be a 100-goal goal kicker. Um, Gary Lyon and Jim Steins had bursts but weren't quite as uh, consistent as we would have expected. And the Demons really just never overcame the fact that they gave too big a start. They won 10 of their 20 games and obviously will be better for the first year under Neil Baum. I think it took a lot of their players a while to become accustomed to the Baum style, but they'll be a lot better next year and I think that Melbourne really is on the way up. Well, the Lions certainly finished the season in a blaze of glory with four wins in a row to finish with the 50-50 scoreline of 10 wins and 10 losses. It was their best year under Robert Shaw and there's certainly indications that uh, if they can just get some stability off the field that they're going to be very, very tough contenders next year. I think the development of Alistair Lynch as a genuine superstar was a huge plus for the club and they now have a sort of a consistency and a solidity amongst their players and, uh, and obviously the morale's better than what we might have expected. And I think there's a general feeling that, uh, that they can go a long way next year. For the second year in a row, they suffered uh, a heavy cost from the interstate game. Last year it was Richard Osborne. This year, Paul Ruse was uh, injured in a game and missed four weeks. And uh, perhaps we're looking at the situation where Shuri is so keen to keep his boys together, he might just deny them the opportunity to represent their state. 
Well, it was a traumatic year all round at St Kilda. I guess the scoreline of uh, 10 wins, 10 losses was pretty good by their standards, but uh, it was drama from the start of the season until the finish. Um, there were the problems that, of Winmar, who walked out on the club after the, uh, the great win at Collingwood, and then Lockett's injuries and, uh, and lack of performance and uh, the constant pressure on Ken Sheldon. I think that they finished the season in a blaze of glory, which would indicate that the future looks healthy. But again, we've got uh, St Kilda making changes at uh, what might seem to be inappropriate times, and we have a new coach coming in and too many indeterminate factors to know just what the future holds for them. Well, the pluses for the new coach are the, uh, the youth of superstar players such as Robert Harvey and Nathan Burke and the obvious talent of the Everett's, uh, Shaw, um, Burke, Hollow and Peckett. So from that point of view, there is certainly to look for, plenty to look forward to at Moravan. Probably the major disappointment of the year in my mind. Uh, they'd won f three of their first eight games and went on to win only four for the season. And what was worse, that they'd suffered some terrible hidings on the way through. I think the real concerns for them were the fact that uh, their best players were a first-year player, Nathan Buckley, the Norwich Rising Star of the Year, and uh, their veteran captain, Roger Merritt. And there certainly was something lacking in the attitude in Brisbane, and it will take some serious discussions over the summer to make sure that the players who we've expected so much of can get back to the form that they showed and that made us think that they could do so well this year. Uh, perhaps I'm a little impatient. I mean, we, they do have a good structure in place. They've moved to Brisbane to play their games. Robert Walls is acknowledged as an excellent coach, and I think that uh, they have a recruiting program and some kids, including Chapman and Voss, that are going to be very good players. So uh, there are some bright spots for Brisbane. Well, everyone at Punt Road was uh, full of optimism after reaching the final of the Fosters Cup, but things just went amiss from there, and it finished up to be a disastrous season. The Tigers won just four of their 20 games and certainly suffered some embarrassing hidings along the way. And the pluses were the emergence of Matthew Richardson, who's obviously going to be a very good player, but several of their experienced players didn't quite live up to expectations and obviously some of the younger ones of whom we expected so much are going to need more time. It's going to be a long, tough summer for the Tigers and John Northey has a huge job in front of him. His hope is that Richardson and Ty Isler and a few of the younger guys can just take up the responsibility and drag the club up the ladder. Now, in relative terms, the Swans had a pretty good finish to the season, with the one point loss to Carlton coming after several spirited displays against good teams. I mean, one win from 20 rounds is a poor scoreline, but the arrival of Ron Barassi, the obvious improvement in discipline and professionalism in the club, and the continued support of the AFL in areas of drafting indicates that uh, people see a long-term future for the Swans. Barassi said he's in there for the long haul. There are some promising kids coming through and all's not as black as it may have looked on the way through this year. It's critical that they retain Simon Mitten Connell, Paul Kelly and Scott Waters and use them as the foundation for the future. And if they can keep their good players, which they haven't been able to do previously, I think that in two or three years' time, Barassi's optimism might turn to reality. Well, it's been a fantastic season, actually. I mean, just to have so many teams contesting the final so late in the season, we had every position changing in the last round of the season. The only reservation I have about this year is the fact that the bottom three teams have never been weaker in the history of the national competition. If we can redress that situation, football's in very healthy shape. I think next year, well, Adelaide have indicated the, uh, the talent that they have and that they're going to be a force along with the West Coast. And probably when we think that uh, teams down in 12th place won half of their games, it really is sort of wide open and just we couldn't have a better setting for 1994. I'm certainly looking forward to it and there's only 20 weeks to go. There are all sorts of claims being made about light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? Justin Madden under pressure. Heaver's got a chance. He finds some space. He gets past. He's running near the centre of the ground. And he goes into the pocket. Looks for Welsh. Wallace up high. Kicked by Kernahan. It's going to go through. It's bounced through. Look at that hand pass. 30 metres to Craig Bradley. He pumps it long. In towards Kernahan and Danaher. Powell is there also. Tucked in the pocket. He bends it round. And he's kicked an amazing goal. Bit it now at the MCG. Salmon has made a lead. Hines in front and Jakovic. Three Essendon players are there. Buick robes it well. Snapshot. Oh, what a pervert! Through to Liptak. 
Short pass up towards the 50. Smart, a good pickup. Gets past Janky easily. Booms a long kick. A oh, terrific kick. Yes! Got a fist on it. Well played. Buckley waits in front. Boots it down towards half forward. Coming across the ground is Roberts. He's outnumbered. The boundary line could be his ally here. No, he keeps it in. Oh, very lax defence. Roberts oh. will kick a goal. <laughs> 35 metres out from goal, here's on the forward line, couldn't take the mark. Back to the 50, Platten's still after it, going at a million miles an hour, Hudson. Brown on the right, this is close, oh what a goal! But this long brilliantly to Harvey, Harvey goes straight towards goal. Silvani and Salmon, punched away by Silvani, Buick off the ground, it's a goal! Magnificent Buick! Spalding, the only chance for Carlton. It flips to the back to Williams. Williams floats a hand pass. Hogg had to wait for it. His tap out is clever. Bradley gathers. Now they're a chance to run it into the breeze. Bradley all the way to the 50. All the way to the 30. Craig Bradley goes for goal and kicks a ripper. A bouncing ball. Williams has been pretty quiet. His left footer. Oh, Madden is 30 metres in the clear. Wren giving chase. Ooh. What a sprint. This is something to watch. Madden goes long for goal. He might have kicked it. Whoa. Sensational. Goes straight down the middle. Lovely kick. Almost to the centre of the ground. Williams waits at the back. But it's uh, to his opposite number, Denham. In the middle. Now Michael Long. Look at this boy go. Away goes Michael Long. 50 metres out. Still going. 30 metres out. Well, on a team basis, winning a premiership is what it's all about. But I think the uh, pinnacle of individual success in the AFL is the Brownlow medal, and uh, Gavin Wanganeen was a winner this year. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. He had a sensational season, Gavin, and uh, um, together with best and fairest, Brownlow is uh, just a sensational effort. You were there? I was there, that's right. Oh, the big night. Nice. Yeah. This is far better than Brownlow. What are you doing? Gavin, what have you got there? Just top it off a bit of pork, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come and show us that cup, will you, mate? Oh, all right. Bring it over. Now, how much, you must have drunk about three... I'll leave you to it. Three champagne. You're not going, eh, mate? Thanks for coming. Okay, one question. One question. Brownlow and, and, um, and the Medea in the grand final premiership. Mate, it's been a big big month for you. Oh, look, just yesterday, winning the grand final is the main one. That's right. Beautiful. And just especially looking at Jim, you know. <laughs> He's looking a bit rough around the edges today, isn't he? But there it is anyway. I declare Gavin Wagner the 1993 Brownlow medal. I thought I might pile a few in a row, so, but um, not totally surprised, but surprised to a certain degree. It's a great pleasure for me to uh, present this 1993 Brownlow medal to a great champion, a magnificent footballer, great skills in the game, Gavin Wanganeen. He's a classic player, with wonderful skills. He's a, a, a Delightful young person to coach. Uh, when I say coach, I mean, it's not a lot that you coach him about because he just has natural ability, can play. It's probably only in the technical areas that you can uh, assist him. Come and get me, Millam he says. But Wanganoon's run brilliantly from the back pocket at his disposal. Oh, he's been tremendous, Sheeds. Um, he's brought back Tim. Obviously, he's known how... Tim's effect would, would be on his younger players. We've got a lot of young players there, um, including myself. And, and just to see those experienced players, and you know, Harvey, Thompson, and, and Salmon, I mean, that gives us a lot of encouragement. And I mean, we help each other out. We've got a 
pull our weight and do our own bit, but the experienced players, they're the guys that hold us together. Oh, what a man by Wanganee! Pumps it long to half forward. Stoner may run into Wanganee. I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm proud of all the boys. But to, to win the Brownlane medal tonight, that's, that's fantastic because he's a type of player, like, he's a, he's a Brownlane medalist and, and they're, the, they're the type of fellas that, that I like to see win Brownlane medals. Hoisted high, short of the goal square. Courage needed here. Oh! It's probably the learning period in his footy career. I think that um, really what's going to happen in the next sort of uh, two to five years is going to be a, a great champion blossom. Pacific, helping the new world of international travelers arrive in better shape. G'day, I'm Ben Hart, and you're watching Football Record Video. Sexton couldn't control the football. They give away a little bit of ground, Essendon. The kick by Harvey, nearly taken by Hannah, picked up by Silvani, chased down by Watson. Grab, well done, Watson. Michael Long, tackled by Wiedemann. Raw rebounds, Maynard. Out in front, Hodges, tackled by Watson. Drag down, Wiedemann, tackled by Sutton. Must get the three kick. Their advantage with the centre breaks in the second two. Smart over the top of uh, Sam and here's Wiedemann. Tackled by Grinvold was good. Weak lip tack likewise. Tregenza has been terrific all day. Modra. Modra in front of Silvani and Silvani's got him again. Can't write them off in this game or in the overall. This is Hogg. Away to Brown, to Gleeson. And the Blues now string it together. Run down by Tregenza. Isn't that magnificent? Fantastic. James the Brisbane Bears Nathan Buckley took out the inaugural Norwich Rising Star Award this year. We had several players, one of them was yourself. You right. must be very happy the way you used turned out for you. And tell me, how much did, uh, how much did Nathan take home? I think it was a paltry uh, ten thousand dollars, Paul. A paltry? I don't know what your contract is. <laughs> the winner of the Norwich Rising Star Award for 1993 is Nathan Buckley from Brisbane. The mark was taken by Buckley coming into the play. Handball over the top, McLean. Back to Buckley. Watch this young fella do something with this. Nathan Buckley, one of the most talented young players in Australia. And he dobs it through the centre. His fourth goal. Yeah, I was uh, quite happy with my year. I think um, I think I, play, I played a fairly well for most of the games and a few bad ones, but you, can, you can't help those. Uh, I didn't follow the progress of... I followed it to a certain amount but uh, a lot of the other blokes must have had good seasons and uh, I was just fortunate to win it I think today. Looks for Merritt, he's behind. Richmond trying to force it clear. Can they do so? No, Buckley. Magical stuff Nathan Buckley. And he's uh, coming back from that, that shoulder hill. Oh, he this player is class. Breeze mostly across the ground. Buckley in the goal square. What a mark! I think uh, to be the inaugural winner too is a uh, is, is a sort of fairly lucky for me. I think uh, hopefully I can uh, I can sort of give them a good name by by going on, and I certainly hope I can in the next uh, ten years. Off to Buckley, and Buckley just racing away from Jarman again. Jarman. Craig Scholl. If you want to know what's going on around the grounds, keep watching Football Record Video. Get 500, you have to pay over 500. Schwab, oh, what a mark by Scholl. Towards the centre wing, Hart, Jungle, couldn't quite hold it. McKenna with some strength, paved the way for Hart. Neat looking kick, or Harding. Oh, Allison, very, very awkward on Harding. 
Cooper a clever hand pass to Nugent. He's off and running. Quick hand pass. In towards Condon. On to Nixon. Nixon runs at it. On to Condon. Carlton kicking to the right with Madden doing the ruck work. Wins it but not out of the centre. Oliver Renshaw has cops a solid one. The ball spills free. Taken by Powell. He handballs to his own advantage. Over the top. Welsh stumbles. Go at it hard. Oh. He does. He stood up. Mackay chances his arm. He's still going, the young man. Giving it to Hannah. Mill Hannah. Cops one. He's down behind players. He gave it away to Hogg. Some light bitters seem to lose that crisp, clean taste after a couple of glasses. So what's so special about Foster Special? Well, Paul, I've been waiting for this segment, the uh, 1993 Norm Smith medalist in the grand final. Yeah, and uh, went to one of the nicest blokes in the game. And I tell you what, uh, James, you must agree he's had a big finish the last two or three months. We're talking about Michael Long, and I mean, he's just... As teammates, he captivates you sometimes, the thing he does. It was a nice thing on the end of some of his passes. Unbelievable, and you were on a few of them. And a few of mine, I reckon we made it look good. Oh, give me a prank, will you? <laughs> the 1993 winner of the Norm Smith medal is Michael Long of Essendon. for looking after him so well and, you know it's Kevin Cheedy looked after him plus the players you know he plays look that's only built his confidence up Michael Long bouncing his way into goal Long kicks and he's kicked it There are a lot of colourful claims being made by light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? Hi, I'm Tony Hall and you're watching Football Record Video. Exactly, I agree, but certainly from this vantage point... Oh, oh, well, that about takes us out for this issue of Football Record Video and the 93 season, James. And we uh, hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed the Premiership and watching Paul Salmon dance at the Hilton on Saturday night. You are an embarrassment, <laughs> really. But that'd be pretty hard, wouldn't it? I mean, nothing will top the, uh, the siren going and uh, you jumping all over me. That's right, You Paul. just wanted to get your face in the photo, didn't you? Well, uh, some people will think it's the other way around, but <laughs> I'll let you think that. Well, next year, we'll see you then. Uh, meanwhile, Bombers Go 93. Bombers. Cheers. Watch this kick. Watch this kick. Right on.